welcome back to my channel 5 Minute Economics where I teach economic concepts in a span of just 5 minutes. The topic for today is the acceleration principle which is a very important model under macroeconomics. I've already made up a video on the multiply analysis or the multiply model which is very important as well and we study that along with the accelerator principle in fact before the accelerator principle so I would request you to watch that video first. The link is in the comment section below. So in today's video I'll be talking about the accelerator model, what is it, the assumptions, criticisms as well as the relevance of this model. So yeah let's get started. Also guys don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel in case you haven't already and do follow me on Instagram for some fun updates on 5 minute economics. So let's get started with few of the assumptions which have been assumed in this particular theory. Basically you realize guys always in economics we, whatever assumptions we take no later on they come to be known as the criticisms but yeah for the successful functioning of the theory we do need to assume few things. So number one over here we've assumed a co constant capital output ratio. In fact the accelerator theory depends on the capital output ratio a lot. What is capital output ratio? Basically due to the increase in capital or how much you know capital gives how much output so you know like four units of machinery give maybe one unit of output so four is to one will be the capital output ratio okay secondly the resources are easily available be it raw materials be it labor be it anything everything is readily and easily available thirdly there is no excess or idle capacity everything has been utilized to the best of its ability Number four, increased demand is permanent, which later we see is uh, actually a criticism because whatever is the increased demand, definitely it's not that always it will be there. We sometimes went, uh, want to, you know, like something, later on we change our demand. It's not that always we will demand that. But over here, we assume that that increase in the demand is a permanent feature. And lastly, guys, increase in output further leads to rise in net investment immediately, you know. Just as the output we see our investment increases, but it's not there, like, you know, there is a significant time lag which has been kind of ignored later on that will be coming as a criticism but now what we have assumed is that further you know increase in the consumption or output further leads to a rise in investment immediately so firstly let me explain to you the concept of the accelerator principle so basically guys the term accelerator principle was developed by J.M. Clark back in 1917 and further this concept was developed by Hicks, Samuelson and Harrod basically in terms of business cycles. So what is it? Basically the accelerator principle or the accelerator model it shows us the change in investment due to change in consumption. So because of the increase in consumption investment increases that part is typically shown by the accelerator. So actually we had studied the multiply analysis where if you remember we spoke about autonomous investment right when autonomous investment increases we saw that there was an increase in income which was much more than the increase in the investment why because of the multiplier theory so this particular change is because of the multiply analysis basically if we just study the multiplier analysis we will be you know studying an incomplete theory and that is why we went ahead studying the accelerator principle this increase in income in the hands of the people further led to increase in consumption and this increase in consumption further led to increase in investment but this time the investment is not autonomous but induced. So this particular part of the cycle is basically uh, because of the functioning of accelerator. So I hope you understand how we come from the increase in income to increase in consumption which further pushes our investment and leads to the induced investment. This is the functioning of accelerator whereas this is the functioning of the multiplier. Together they constitute business cycles which will be further study. So the formula for the accelerator is delta I upon delta C where I capital I in economics always stands for investment. So this shows the change in investment due to change in consumption. I've written the formula for multiply as well so that you don't get confused. The so multiplier which is denoted usually by K, M or K you can call it. It's delta Y upon delta I. So don't get confused between these formulas. In this time or in this particular term, you know, we saw that we saw the increase in the income because in, of increase in investment. That's why investment is in the denominator because we are seeing the change on the income. Whereas in this case, we are seeing the change in investment due to the change in consumption. And in this case, our I is in the numerator. So don't get confused with that. Supposing our consumption increases by 10 crores, whereas our income increases by 50 crores, Simply by putting over here 50 upon 10, we get our uh, accelerator as 5. So I hope you are clear with the concept of the accelerator. 
So moving ahead to the relevance or the importance of the accelerator principle, why do we study it, what, why is it required, what is its significance? Number one, magnitude of induced investment. Because of the help of you know, the accelerator principle, we can find out how much is our investment increasing due to the increase in consumption demand. So that induced investment, the chart, remember what I showed you, that induced investment, how much is it increasing, the magnitude is dependent, is found out basically uh, because of the help of the accelerator. Secondly, and very important function, it explains the violent fluctuations in business activity, which are trade cycles. You know the trade cycles guys, I'm sure you've heard about it before. It is because of the working of multiply and accelerator do these cycles operate. In future maybe I can make a video on these particular on this particular topic. But for now what you have to remember is that because of the working together of multiply and accelerator, especially now we're talking about accelerator now. So it, you know, these violent fluctuations in business activity, these business cycles or these trade cycles, it is because, uh, you know, these accelerator model, it helps us to study this. And lastly, guys, also if there is any economic instability, so that is found out using the accelerator principle. So that is the relevance or the importance of the accelerator principle. So lastly, coming to the limitations of the accelerator principle. So though the accelerator principle is of very much importance, we just studied that, there are a few limitations in it. Number one, the capital output ratio is not constant. So in our assumption, we had assumed that the capital output ratio remains constant, but that is actually not true. It doesn't happen and this further pops up as a criticism. Ideal capacity in plants. Secondly, this is one important criticism. We have assumed that there is no excess or ideal capacity in plants, but that is something very rare and ideal capacity in plants does exist. Thirdly, change in demand is not permanent. What we have assumed in analysis that the change is permanent. You know, whatever we like, we will like keep on liking it, but that is not true. In fact, that is a temporary change in the demand. And further, this leads to a criticism. Next, resources are not easily available. What we've assumed, everything is very easily and readily available, but that is untrue. Next, foreign sector has not been included. We've not spoken about the foreign sector anyway, guys. Next, it does not explain the timing of investment. Very important criticism. What they have told is spoken about the magnitude of investment best at its best, you know, like when we increase our consumption demand, how the investment increases. But there has nothing been spoken about the time. They've assumed immediately, Jesse, Jesse, you know, demand increases, our investment increases, but that is not true. They've not spoken about the timing, which is a big criticism. And lastly, it neglects the role of future expectations. So if we, you know, uh, we don't base our investment only on the basis of demand current demand you know we don't assume on that we keep in mind future expectations what are the political developments or whatever happens so that has something which has been completely ignored in the analysis so this is all about the limitations of the accelerator principle and thank you so much guys for watching this video if this video was useful for you please do like this video and subscribe to my channel and i'll see you in the next video pretty soon